Hello and welcome back and today we're continuing our look at QNAP's mobile applications. We've already covered a bunch of them and today we want to talk about QVideo. Now first and foremost straight off the bat as I've started every single one of these videos it's worth mentioning at the top right of the screen there um, if we scroll down we can see that we're using the network but no internet and no mobile data. The reason for that is if there's pop-ups or notifications there's all manner of things that could ruin this video for you. So I've disabled all of that but don't be surprised if somewhere along the way the lack of internet connectivity on my device may hamper these apps ever so slightly. So if it does that I will highlight that point to you to make sure that we can see the distinguishment between myself and my mobile phone and QNAP's apps as well as trying to figure out if the word distinguishment is actually a word. Totally isn't. Today we're going to look at QVideo. It's the video application available on iOS and Android completely for free for enjoying video files on your QNAP NAS over the network and over the internet. Now of course this isn't the only means with which to enjoy media on your NAS. QNAP has a multifaceted means with which to enjoy media on your NAS from you know more well-known ones such as Plex and MB all the way down to other lesser network video applications such as VLC and X video, I believe. Uh, there might even be a pornography site when I say it out loud. What's the one I'm thinking of? DX video. There you go. So close, so close. Nevertheless, moving forward, if we look at the application there, Q video, we've already got a uh, NAS already pre found on the network, but once you've got the app installed, it's incredibly straightforward. If you go to the bottom there where it says add NAS, and from there, you can see that it's already found a NAS on my local area network. If we click there, we can then add the username. You know, if you've got multiple users, you can don't have to use an admin, as well as adding the password below. And then you can click save at the top right, and it will add the NAS to your list of available NAS devices. Now, if we go into this NAS, we can see straight away it opens into the shared videos tab. Now, these are videos that you've deigned to share with other users as well as sharing across the internet and the network. These are files that you have deemed accessible to either all or at least the users that have access on this mobile app device. We've got lots of screen recordings there. We've got lots of other stock footage from previous videos I've done. It's all in that one big shared video album. That is the shared folder we used in previous videos during speed tests using this NAS. Now, the application has got a number of different multifaceted means of accessing your media. Not only can you access the media via your mobile phone over the network or the internet, but you can stream directly from the NAS to connected multimedia devices. What will happen here is the NAS will then stream to these devices in the network environment if they were listed there without using your mobile. Your mobile just acts as a remote control between them. On top of that, at the top right, we can change the view mode with which we can see all of these files and folders. And of course, list them in different ways. We can search for individual files and folders using the advanced, advanced search functionality there at the top. And of course, if we go into the app itself on the top left, we can find out more information. Now, by default, the video station application and indeed the um, Q video app that we're using have classifications. What this is, is if you go for say movies, you can then in the app on the NAS, change which folder your um, NAS will index to find those movie folders. Now you can set these things up by default because the NAS does arrive with a bunch of pre-made folders at the beginning but, and this is really really important and definitely something that QNAP NAS is very very good at, they give you the ability to choose and index the folders that you want to access files and folders in using things like Multimedia Console which has just been released I believe still in beta but it will be fully fledged very, very soon, as well as just generally letting each app have its own choice of folders, something that a lot of NAS brands don't offer. Now, if we want to play a file, we can click on it like that, and not only can we play the original file, but we can transcode the file into different sizes. For those that aren't aware, transcoding is the ability to change a file's format, its codec, its scale, its size, so many things about it to make it more suited to the device it's playing on. So for those of you that have ever you, if you're using and accessing your NAS over the internet, you might be on a metered connection. You might be using your mobile phone and data plan that have less readily available data. This allows you to scale down the file to a smaller version that's probably absolutely fine on your mobile since you're not watching on a 4K telly and use less data. There's lots of reasons why a person would do this, but for now we're just gonna click the original fully sized file 
and then it will allow you to select which video player you've got on your mobile device to play it. I'm going to use the QVideo app from QNAP and it's going to ask me if I want to play back where I left off during the testing. I'll say yes. So again, we're going to leave the music playing there. Anyone that's ever watched this film, Stone Cold Classic. I'm going to pause it a second there. And again, that might not have played very, very well, but you have to remember I am using screen recording software on my mobile phone. So, of course, that will make a great deal of difference to the output during this recording. So don't blame the app. You've got to blame my phone and the screen recording. I'm on a pretty good phone, Google Pixel, but there's still no, record, no denying that um, rendering will kill your GPU. Um, so... From here, there's lots of different options open to you. If we look at the top there, first and foremost, we can stream, as mentioned earlier, to different connected devices over DLNA. But what's really interesting is this 360 button. Because then, if you're watching a 360 video, as you see here, I'm going to move my phone. Doesn't help, it's during the credit scene. And we can watch this on a 360 headset. But what's really interesting is cardboard mode. It will then turn any video into that VR headset mode that a number of you are interested in. Whether you've got one of the cheap third-party ones on eBay or if you're using Google Cardboard, this allows you to have any video turned into that 3D mode. I'm just moving my phone around throughout and we can exit that at any time. Come back to that so we don't all get sick. So from here, we've still got the file playing. And again, I imagine the GPU has gone absolutely bananas during this screen recording. I apologize if there's problems. Um, but also from here, we can go to the top right, add it to a playlist and more. The bottom allows us to change some of the playback options. And again, if we were using transcoding, we would be able to change a number of these while it's playing, as well as, of course, volume that we can change if we so choose and lots of other features and functionality. Let's come out of that file make our way back and again there's different files and folders so we've got like mr bean think of it all the files that i've stuck on there from previous videos and lots of other things too all of these classifications i've set up manually but you don't have to do it if you don't want to and which brings us down to the other reason i really really like qnaps mobile apps and i know this doesn't appeal to everyone but let me explain as mentioned when i did this video Ooh, about I believe 14 maybe even 15 months ago and I'm re-reviewing re all of these apps for 2019 one of the re main reasons that the QNAP apps for me won is because on the one hand they've got smart classification and the ability for things to be indexed in a semi-intelligent manner by the system you can give it a certain folders to index and it will update those thumbnails and all the descriptions and stuff automatically but if you are someone that wants to access on a file folder level, it allows you to choose which one you want to do at any given time. So for now, we've been doing classification. But if we want, we can just go through our NAS on a file folder level. And remember, at the bottom of the screen there, we've still got that video file ready to play whenever we want it. So let's get rid of that there. So again, this gives us the ability to access our NAS as file folder in case there's something specific we want to access, such as videos from home movies so like here this is an individual album for when i've gone traveling and this isn't a folder because it's a photo album that i would have indexed as a video folder i wouldn't have indexed this so this gives me the ability to look at these videos from when i was in taipei and hong kong in a manual setting and there's so many different ways in which although you might want to look at videos in a smart fashion and always access the same media in the same indexed folders occasionally you're going to want to go off piste you're going to want to look at individual folders that aren't the norm and the ability to be able to choose between folders and smart folders is very very important and hence why i like it so much now you can create collections if you do it with different tv shows like comedy and genres or smart collections using different variables but all of these have to be configured on the nas but they're all different ways to classify your media and it doesn't force you to choose one which is a big deal for me it doesn't scrape metadata in the same way that the likes of plex do or even Synology's video application video station but it, a lot of those apps do not give you the file folder access that this does, as well as the customization options. So it's another reason why I'm a big fan. Now, say you want to share a video file. Let's go back to TV shows. Say this particular episode of Mr. Bean, the pilot. 
say we wanted to share this file we can go to info and find out more information about it but again it doesn't scrape metadata as um, efficiently as the likes of plex but if we want to do this we can now share this file click share we can say do we want to make a link send by text and by email share now if we want to copy link we've now got a link so all i have to do is send this link to whoever i want we can copy it up there it's now copied to the clipboard and i can send that link via text via email via facebook however i want just to send that file to people it's that easy to share files now if we go down here and go to um, the shared options we can now see oh, that's all of those shared ones we look at the shared collections or the background tasks there we can see files that are downloaded upload and downloaded and just generally all the options are readily available to us via this user interface and it's very quick that's another thing i've not really highlighted in this video just how fast this app is yes i'm using it over the network which is important because obviously you're going to have a different kind of bit rate while doing it but it's still a great little app and the configuration options go a lot deeper too we can change the size of the download folder to make sure we can limit the amount of space videos are taking we can auto sync if we choose or download video files as we so choose and of course once you're watching a video you can choose whether to store that file on your phone permanently or just get the whole cache to flush itself each time by choosing the amount of cache space you want as well as clearing it manually or automatically if we carry on we can choose whether we want to watch files over wi-fi only so just in case you're watching a video and for some reason you disconnect from the wi-fi the last thing you want is for your app to carry on using all your mobile data that could be horrendous so that's a good way to make sure that you only use wi-fi or only use whatever's available and again you can choose different players you can add other players too and set it up so you never have to choose a player and the same goes for if you want to not have to bother about transcoding going forward next hardware accelerated decoding is another way to increase performance on your client device on the playback of those video files and lastly signing in with the qnap id allows you to access all of these files in every way that i've showed you today but via the internet not the network anywhere in the world and i do recommend that and it is completely free after you buy your nas you've got free access to this via the internet with free ddns setup i say free it's included in the price of your nas and that's about it really we can look at the files and folders we've got all the usual options you'd expect from any kind of nas app but i do like the video tailoring what i would like to see in a revised version in the future would be more metadata scraping more information being pulled so this app can compete with the likes of plex in the same way synology's video station app does compete with plex on many many levels but this isn't an app that's trying to be plex this is an app that's trying to be your multimedia friend and cover as many bases as possible to help you enjoy your video files i'm going to wrap things up here i hope you've enjoyed this video if you've got any questions do let me know but otherwise don't forget to click like and subscribe and i'll continue doing these mobile overviews in the coming days thank you so much for watching toodle pip